I'm David Derry. I'm the lead physiotherapist for the Northwest Ventilation Service here at Withenshaw Hospital. I'm going to talk to you through the Nippy 3 Plus today. So this is the Nippy 3 Plus. You can see it's switched on at the moment. Okay. We're going to start from the back and work our way round to the front. So this is the back of the Nippy 3 Plus ventilator. There's three main areas you need to be aware of. Okay. This section here is a filter. So inside of the machine there is a turbine which generates a flow of air. Depending upon what settings we set your ventilator to it will depend upon how much air is blown out of the machine. What this filter does is it just protects that fan and the inner workings of the device from any dust that might be in the atmosphere. To change the filter what you need to do is to place two fingers either side, squeeze and pull out. You'll see here it's a fabric filter that gets binned and then is replaced and it then pushes back into position. So we recommend that filters are changed at least once a month or more regularly if it appears visibly dirty or visibly dusty. The next thing to be aware of is the power cable socket. Okay, You can see there's a little bar that comes down here as well too. I'll talk to you about what that does in a moment. Power cable is a standard three pin plug. It pushes into place like so and this bar then comes down and locks it in place. It's really important to keep that in place because it will just stop the, the power cable from coming out accidentally. The third feature which you'll notice here is a additional accessory which we might use with you. Not all of our patients will have this in place but for, for those that are more dependent on the ventilator we will attach an external battery. This is the external battery. It sits on top of the machine like so. You can see here the connection point there is a little rocker button which we can push down. What you want to do is make sure that rocker button is sitting at the top and simply push and lock it into place. Okay. If you want to remove that, push the button down and pull out. To turn the machine on and off, what we would do is we press the power button here. So press it once. It will do a quick internal check before it then starts ventilating and starts blowing air in and out. All the settings that you have been set for you, you can find along this side of the machine. You've got two little bars here, bar graphs here. One shows the pressure and the other shows the flow. And the flow basically means how much air is being blown out of the machine. So it has an internal battery built into the device and you can see here, this is what the symbol INT refers to. It gives you a quick idea as to roughly how much charge you have in the machine. Okay. But to check more accurately, what you would do is disconnect the machine from the main source, like so. The machine will alarm to tell you it's running on battery power. We we'll press the alarm silence here. And that will silence the machine for two minutes and acknowledge the fact that you've disconnected the power cable. You press the set button twice. So this button here, listen for that beep and it will come up and tell you exactly how long of, of battery life you have here. So at the moment on the current settings you have 4 hours and 50 minutes. We've got sections here which say high alarm and low alarm. The high alarm, if it alarms, the machine alarms for a high alarm, what it would mean is that there is a problem with a disconnection from the ventilator. So that might be that your mask is leaking, or it could be that the, the, the tubing has become disconnected from your mask or from the ventilator itself. I'll show you what would now happen if the alarm was just to sound. This is a high flow alarm now. So you can see the ventilator actually alarms and tells you that there's a high flow alarm. So it tells you to check the mask and breathing circuit for leaks, adjust your mask fit, or replace faulty breathing circuit components. It will then go on to a disconnection alarm, okay, which is a further high priority alarm. If that's the case, you need to try and think about refitting your mask, checking the tubing to make sure there's no leaks in the circuit, 
or that it's not been accidentally disconnected from the ventilator. Once you've solved the problem, the machine will automatically silence the alarm itself. So if the ventilator was to alarm for a low flow alarm, you would expect to see this. You need to check the airway and breathing for any obstructions. So have a look in your face mask, make sure there's no saliva or vomit in there at all. Make sure that there's no water in the tubing, okay? And make sure you're not lying on top of the, the, the exhale port on your face mask itself. So if an alarm was to sound on the ventilator, we can silence the ventilator for two minutes. And we do this by pressing the button, which has the bell with the cross through. Once you've resolved the issue with the alarm, it's really important to take that alarm silence off. And we do this by pressing and holding that same button down. So we press and hold until you hear that second long beep. You'll see now the bell with the cross through disappears from the screen. To turn the machine off, simply press and hold this button. It will come up with a, another box asking you to confirm if you want to turn the ventilator off. To do that, press and hold the button again. Okay, so I'm gonna show you now how you put your Nippy 3 Plus ventilator into the carry case. What we need to do is to disconnect the power cable from the ventilator. Take the carry case and open the front section. Lift the ventilator up and slide this into the carry case. The flap should be folded over and the zip sealed. In the top pocket, you can place your external battery like so, just feed it through and push it in place and again close the flap over the top. Turning around now to the back of the machine, pull the external battery connector out and connect this in place. And finally, connect the power cable into the back of the device and then pull the silver guard over the top. There's a strap and a carry handle which can be used for mounting the device onto your wheelchair or you can use a strap to carry it over your shoulder.